Hello, everybody. Bam. What up, everyone? How's it going? How is your Friday nights going? My Friday night's going pretty good because I've got some new computer parts to get together. But it's also very lonely as my wife is like a thousand miles away down in San Antonio right now, probably having a blast at PAX South. She's down there with Rick. Um, they've been having a lot of fun. Who was that? I was Firestar with 29 months! Hey, you are great. Best 29 months I've had. Aw, thank you, Firestar. Drop them bears, everybody. Um, so, thank you everyone that's tuning in to the stream, by the way. This is just a random uh, stream where I'm going to be putting together my new computer. Um, there's not going to be any games that we're playing on this stream. Uh, it's going to be probably like two or three hours of me just assembling parts and just hanging out. So, totally get it if that's not like the thing that you want to watch. If you guys do want to watch that, I can certainly try to teach you guys some stuff if you're interested in that. Or just sort of seeing the sexy gear that I got myself. Um, and just sort of hanging out and uh, keeping me company. Um, so, with that, yeah, I don't really have a lot of flash and pomp to this stream. I don't really have a lot of build-up or anything. I think we're just going to sort of get into it. We're listening to some sweet tunes here. Uh, Kitato, with the 18 months, thank you so much. Drop them bears, everyone. Um... All right, so let's see what we got here. Um, here we go. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I sort of did, did a little over late because I imagine a lot, lot of people, people are going to be asking, asking what, what parts, parts I'm using. using. Um, no, not over late doesn't necessarily keep. keep uh, doesn't necessarily have every, every single, single part, part that I'm using. But it's got, got the, the most, most important ones. ones. Um, um I, am, I, am I replacing, replacing Linda? Linda? No. no. It's, it's echoing? echoing? Oh. oh. How's that? Sorry, y'all. Should not be echoing anymore. There we go. Yeah, good. Um, I sort of like it, though. Haha. <laughs> Anyway, so no, this computer is not replacing Linda. Linda is the one that's driving this stream right now. Uh, Linda is the workhorse for Stumped. Uh, Linda is the computer that lives out here in the studio. Um, my computer, uh, my personal computer that is, sits down in the basement next to Jasmine, um, that's the computer that I game on just for myself, for fun. Um, that computer's name is Phobos, by the way. We're not going to be naming, we're not going to be picking a new name. That computer already has a name. Um, my computer's name is Phobos, and I've had that computer, or at least the parts that are in that computer downstairs, for about six years now. Um, it's the computer that we first started Stumped with, uh, so there's some sentimental value there. But its parts are starting to really show its age. Um, it's got a Intel 4770K. Uh, when I first got it, it had a NVIDIA 780, I think. Now it has an NVIDIA 970. Um, so it's not necessarily a bad computer, but it's really struggling to do gaming at 1080p, 60 frames per second, on like high or ultra. Like I don't wanna, this is just like my elitism, but I don't wanna have to go down to medium. So, so brand new computer time. Um, Things are happening. Stop jazz! Go to jail! 33 months! I can't hear you over the music, but I love you. Kiss, kiss from Pac. Steph says hi! No, Ste Steph says beep, beep. Excuse me? Beep, beep? Oh, so I'll turn down the music. How's that, y'all? Tell me if that sounds okay. I want you to at least be able to hear sort of the tunes in the background, but I definitely want you to be able to hear me as well. Uh, oh, so Jazz, go to jail. Oh, so did I miss somebody? I missed a uh, germ buggy 3 brand new Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much. I hope you guys are dropping them bears. Um, okay. Let's do this so they don't have to move stuff around so much. There we go. 
Okay. There we go. So, like I said, my computer, the one that I've had for six years, is the one that we started stumped with. It's a great computer, um, but it is starting to show its age. This new computer, you can sort of see the specs over there. Uh, let's talk about what I got. So, I guess first thing, since it's on the table, I'm using the Fantex um, P400S. Um, whoa, what did my TV just do? It zoomed in. Stop that. No. Okay. Live zoom is off. Good. Never do that again, television. You're freaking me out. Um... Is Rick in the chat now? Rick is. Get out of here. Go to jail. You guys are in Pack South. You should be eating some, like, breakfast tacos or something. Um, Miranda Mythblood with the 18 months. 18 months, but here. 18 months here, but months of laughs. Thank you. At least, like, in those 18 months, probably, like, at least a week of laughs, I imagine. We can at least guarantee that. Um... All right, so if we don't get started, I'm just going to keep on to getting distracted. Uh, this is the Fantex P400S, P400S um, Tempered Glass Edition. Rick with the 100 bits. Hey, good looking. Miss you big time. Oh, right back at you, buddy. Um, this is the same case that I used on Linda. Um, Linda has like the black and green edition. This is the black and white edition. Um, this is the same case that I've been using a lot lately. It is my favorite case at the moment. Um, it is a mid tower case and it's just all around great. Um, it's very minimal. It's big open space inside and it just looks really sleek and sexy on the outside and it doesn't break the, break the bank. You can get it easily for under a hundred bucks. Um, so yeah, I think it's great. Um, I learned my lesson, like, when I first built Phobos six years ago. I built that with a Thermaltake Cosmos. I think Thermaltake is the manufacturer of the Cosmos case. Anyway, it was it was the original Cosmos case. And that thing was like, it was like half of me. It was like so freaking tall. Um, never again. Never again with the big cases. Anyway, um, let's get into this. Dancer's foot. My mom's in chat. Uh, okay. Get rid of the plastic. It's always a satisfying feeling. Uh, get rid of this tempered glass here. And then we'll talk about the other stuff we have going on. Sitting next to me here is the, um, Intel Core i9 9900K. I kind of want to show off the box because it's a little ridiculous. Um... Lavelane, you have the Cosmos 2. How do you like it? Like, it's a good case. It's just, or at least my, my original Cosmos, It's a, it was a good case. I loved how many USBs it had on the front. Um, it was just freaking huge. So, let's see, which camera? You. You. So, here's the Intel Core i9-9900K. Are you going to focus, camera? Like, do you know how to autofocus? Apparently not. I'm gonna try something here, y'all. I hope this doesn't ruin the video. One more. There we go. Now we auto focus. There we go. You're doing it. Um. Quarry nine. What's what's ridiculous about this is it's in this like. Uh, what is this? Is this a D20? Is this a D10? Someone tell me what this is. I think this is a D10, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but inside of it, it's got, like, the CPU sort of held precariously in this thing. It's very weird. It's a D12. All right. Thank you. Um, new D&D &D dice. This would be ridiculous as a D&D &D dice. This would be very fun to use. Um, anyway... Let's talk about this for just a minute. Um, so, this CPU um, is overkill. If you are just gaming, this is way too much for you. 
Um, and in some, a lot of regards, the new uh, i9 line is a little bit stupid as well. But um, I got it because it is extremely good for games. Like, it is technically one of the best gaming CPUs out there. Um, but it is also very good if you're a content creator. I don't necessarily on this computer think I'm going to be doing that much content creation. That's still what Linda's for. But um, there's the potential that I might be doing some. And if that need arises, this computer, this CPU will crush that pretty well. Um, I'll say if you're in the market today for a CPU just for gaming, I think Intel's new line is dumb, if I'm going to be honest. Um, this Core i9 line is way overkill for gaming. They have a i7 97K, um, which is like 150 bucks less. And that one, that CPU is gimped, in my opinion. Um, because the previous generation, the i7 8700K, that one had six cores and 12 threads because it had hyper threading. But on the 9700K, they got rid of hyper-threading. So it has eight cores, but only eight threads. Um, the 8700K is still available, and it's like $50 less than the 9700K. So if you're a gamer and you're looking for a new C CPU, I'd recommend the previous generation 8700K. Anyway, that's my rant on that. Um, I find it really dumb that Intel got rid of hyper-threading on the i7 line. You can only get hyper-threading on the i9 line. And hyper-threading, in my opinion, helps out a lot with rendering. What's so bad about i9? It, there's nothing bad about it. I just feel like they, with their 9th gen CPU lineup, they, they gimped things purely for... Um, they gimped things for no reason than other to uh, other than to make money. Um, so there was no reason to get rid of hyper threading on the 9700K, other than to make people want to buy the more expensive 9900K. Um, I'll also say that compared to Threadripper, which is what Linda uses, uh, Linda has the I forget what the numbers are, but it's the AMD Threadripper that has 12 cores and 24 threads. Um, there's things on CPUs called PCI memory lanes, which sort of determines like how many GPUs you can use, how many M.2 hard drives you can use, how much bandwidth you can like send through your computer. This is like, you know, this has eight cores, 16 threads, I think, I think, um, Eight cores, 16 threads? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, um, but it only has something like 16 or 20 um, PCIe memory lanes, whereas the newest Threadripper has like 64. Um, so I do feel like AMD is kicking their butt in some regards. But as far as just like pure gaming experience goes, Intel is still, still sort of the king on that. Um, okay, so... Let's start prepping our case here. Uh, I'm going to take off the front panel, which I I already took off the front panel, the glass. I'm going to take off the back panel because we're going to need to get into that area a whole lot. And then we're going to get cracking here. Start talking about the motherboard we got. Mount the motherboard. Mount the CPU. A lot of people like to mount their CPU onto the motherboard before they mount the motherboard into the case. I am not one of those people. Sometimes that's easier if you, uh, I can totally understand that reason if you have a, a CPU fan that is like really a pain in the butt to mount. And I'll admit this is the first time I'm using this particular CPU fan, so hopefully it is not a pain in the butt to mount. Okay. Uh, let's switch the camera view over here so you guys can sort of see what I'm dealing with. Um, I'll sort of show off. This case has nice black and white accents. I really like 
just the look of this case. But one of the things I love about this case is just it's simple um, and it's got good cable management places. I like these Velcro things. I like the SSD trays here. That's a really nice place for them. Um, I like these trays here for normal spinny hard drives, which I should say um, right from the top, one of the things that I'm most excited about uh, with this computer, this is the very first time that I am going to be going, this is the very first time I'm gonna have a computer that won't have a mechanical hard drive in it. I'm super excited about that. Um, I'm going with a 480 gigabyte M.2 NVMe hard drive. This guy over here. This guy over here. Bam. And then I'm going with a two terabyte regular solid state drive. These were on sale last week. Um, they're still expensive, much more expensive than a normal mechanical hard drive, but it was a good price. It was about half as expensive as it normally would be for a two terabyte solid state drive. Um, and I am super excited to not have mechanical stuff in this computer. Oh, so Hobbit Kitty with a hundred bits, some biddies for a rare stumped bear string. Thank you so much. Okay. So other stuff, I'm gonna get these front panel cords out of my way for a second. Um, should I mount the power supply first? I might mount the power supply first. Yeah, probably do power supply first. So let's grab that. Bam! Here's our power supply, y'all. It's, um, what is it? Seasonic? Seasonic Focus Gold 750 watt. Um, when possible, if you are building up a computer on your own, you should look for 80 plus certified power supplies because they are greener. Um, and the gold, there is a whole tiered system to them. There's regular 80 plus certified. There's 80 plus bronze. There's 80 plus gold. There's 80 plus platinum. And then there's like 80 plus titanium. I think those are the tiers, if I remember correctly. I'm making a mess over in that direction. Um, in fact, I'll probably pan the camera over there after we're done so you guys can see all the boxes and crap that we will have thrown over there by the end of the stream. Um, anyway, I also consider Seasonic to be just about the most um, dependable uh, power supply. I've never had one go out on me, whereas I've, I have had EVGA power supplies go out on me. I have had Corsair power supplies go out on me. Seasonic has always been extremely dependable and they just have the best ratings out of all the power supplies. Okay, no one will see the mess, so the mess does not exist. I like that, I like that theory. Um, I'm gonna set aside some of that stuff. Uh, for those of you unaware um, with what the power supply looks like, this is what you would normally see on the back of a computer, and that's what will be on the back of my computer. But on the opposite side, this is what it looks like. There's all these little jacks here. This is what's called a fully modular, fully modular power supply. So uh, modular power supplies mean that the cords are not built into them, which makes it a lot easier to cable manage uh, your computer if you only use the cords that you actually need. So all the cords come separately um, and you can use just the ones that you actually need. Do, 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 do. unpacking this stuff. 
What specs did you buy? You can see some of my specs over there in the corner. Um, but if you have questions about any of the other parts, let me know. Ah. Okay. So. Uh, actually, I'll leave that there. That's a nice little tray. Uh, okay. People talking about our Minecraft series? Yeah. I'm not going to get into our Minecraft series on this stream, but we have plans for it. It will eventually happen, or at least the story will eventually get fleshed out. Do, do, do. Coming 2018! Whoa, I just accidentally did something with my mouse. There we go. Us plebeans cannot make this. Honestly, I mean, budget-wise, that's a whole other thing. But if you're just intimidated about actually building up your own computer, you shouldn't be. Because it is basically like adult Legos. It is very simple. Um, and at the end of the day, it is way, way cheaper, um, to build your own. If you were to spec out a computer with, with these types of components in it, um, on something like, I think I actually did just for fun, uh, after I picked up my parts and I ordered them on Newegg, I looked up how much this computer would cost on something like Digital Storm, which is a custom PC manufacturer, um, and they didn't have my exact parts, but they I got as close as I could. Uh, and it was close to almost twice uh, what I paid for it. Okay. So I've undone all the twist ties on my stuff. So now it's time to select the cords that I'm actually going to need. Um, so I'm definitely going to need motherboard power, PCI power, I can get away with just one thread on that. Yeah, I think I can get away with just one thread. I never hear, for anyone else that's a computer nerd out there, um, my video card is the RTX uh, 2070. So I'm almost positive it's going to require two eight pins, like at least, probably. Um, but I, I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty sure it's just two eight pins. However, I can never really tell if the appropriate thing is to use one thread from the modular power supply, which has two eight pins, or if I need to use two threads. Um, where's another? I know I have another one. Anyway, you get, here here's another one. If I need to use two threads. This one technically has two 8-pins, so I think it's fine. At the end of the day, no biggie. If it just doesn't power on, then we probably know why. My 2070 required a 6 and an 8. Okay, I mean, that's fine. Still, I can get away with just one thread with that. I just don't use the, the little 2 here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so... One of those, and the motherboard cord. Uh, we're going to need... Wow, I actually can't believe I'm about to say this. We're going to need only just one SATA power thread. Uh, the CPU power. I think, I think this, um, this CPU requires two of these CPU power things. So I'm going to leave both of those out. And I think that's it. Man, it's it's crazy that they now only include a single Molex. These used to power everything. Everything used to be powered by this. Ah, focus! You're not going to focus, fine. Anyway old, old school stuff. Okay. Let us hook up everything that we need here. Let's get it mounted, and then let's get building the rest of this system. 
So. We want motherboard. You guys even see what I'm doing? Probably not. I'll move this slightly closer so you can at least see. I'm plugging in these motherboard pin things. Colty Bear is raiding with a party of eight. What's up, Mr. Colty? How's your night going? And everyone that's joining us, we're, uh... Welcome to the stream. Welcome, Raiders. We're building a computer right now. Um, so no exciting, like, gameplay stuff or anything. But if you're interested to see a crazy computer being built, feel free to stick around and chill with me. Keep me company. There we go. There's the motherboard power in to the power supply. Then let's get the SATA. Only a single SATA. It's ridiculous, ridiculous to me, y'all. In fact, only yeah, I think we're only going to have one thing powered by a single SATA connector, and that's going to be the one solid state drive that we have, because the other one's an M.2. Um, I've never used an M.2, by the way. I'm kind of excited. Um, okay, so we're going to have a single thread for our PCIe. Come on. PCIe, there we go. Bam. Uh, another, here we go. And then dual CPU. I guess I kind of want to look at my CPU before I do this. Actually, I was so scared installing my M.2, no reason to be though. Is this your computer, Ash? Yes, this is going to be replacing my personal computer. Oh, my friend John's in here. What's up, John? Um, so, yeah, I know that they're amazing. Um, I know that they're kind of delicate, but... I guess my main thing is that I've heard that there's some heat concerns with it. I know that there's some, like, thermal spreaders on this. I also want to make sure that I'm installing it in the correct M.2 slot. Because I believe on this particular motherboard, when I install an M.2 onto here, it will disable a couple of my SATA connectors. Um, so I just want to make sure I'm installing it on the appropriate slot. So it's not messing up other things, though. Wait, they are delicate? I mean, they're a chip. You're dealing with an exposed chip, so it's not like it's in a... Uh, it's not like it's in a... Enclosure, like a solid-state drive or a hard drive would be. Uh, okay, so I have an 8-pin CPU and a 4-pin CPU. So yes, I am going to need to use both. I wonder if I can show you guys up here. I've got an 8-pin CPU and a 4-pin CPU up there. This is the Gigabyte uh, Aorus Pro. Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Pro. Um, and now that I'm looking at this, I think that I really just have to use the the top M.2, the one that's closest to the CPU. It seems to be the main full-sized one. It's the one that's got the largest uh, heat spreader on it anyway. So really, I don't think I have any other options on what slot I'm going to use. There's only two M.2 slots that I see anyway. I know sometimes there's some underneath these, these shrouds, which 
I don't think that there is on this particular one. Not that I can see anyway. I think there's only two M.2 slots on this guy. And I think I need to go for this one. Off topic, but what's your favorite class for Divinity 2? That's a good question. Um, I'll say that I think uh, Summoner was fun. Summoner's what I ran with the Red Prince. But... And I people that have played Divinity Original Sin 2, you can feel free to, to set me straight. But I do feel like um, melee focused classes, just in general, do more damage, more damage even than classes that are supposed to be glass cannony, like a mage, like a summoner, like rogues even, because. Los was, I forget what class exactly, but she was sort of like a paladin or knight or something. Um, and man, her with a two-handed weapon would just wreck face, doing like three times as much damage in one hit than any other character could possibly do. And now that Jazz is playing it again with Rick and she's playing it on a personal save, the same still seems to be true. Melee focused characters still do more damage, which seems backwards to me if you what's the point of rolling any kind of glass cannon character strategic wise like it's more fun to have a, a whole party of different things but like why bother if uh the most efficient route seems to be having a bunch of tanks that are also melee it seems like you would survive easier Jasmine does love that game, though. Two-handed weapons are so OP. It's true. Like, um, Los, when we had her with uh, a one-handed weapon and a shield, yeah, she was good. She was still, like, a force to be reckoned with. But as soon as we equipped a two-handed something on her, it was a night and day difference. Things were insane. Okay. Um, I've always been someone that mounts the the power supply down so the fan points downwards. I never know if that's the efficient way to do it. I'm sure there's people that could talk to me about airflow and say that you could create a tunnel that uh. The, p the power supply is venting hot air upwards, and then you could mount another uh, fan on the top of the case to create a static pressure vacuum to have it all go out that way. My thing is, venting hot air in to the case whenever I don't have to, I just don't see the point. Sir Crest is up in here. What's up, Brett? We're just building up a computer. Uh, the warfare ability, uh, the warfare ability source skill with the 360 blade spin is so broken. I know that Los was like full warfare. That was like the most populated skill I had on her. I'm almost positive. Um, she had a lot of warfare anyway. I don't know if I. It's been so long that I honestly can't remember the 360 spin if we, if Los was using that or not. The fan on the PSU is nearly always an intake, so it always exhausts from the case. And if it's a, if it's an efficient unit, the fan may not be able to be spinning most of the time. It is. It is an efficient unit, and that's good. That's a good point, uh, Brett. It is. I didn't even think about that. For whatever reason, I thought that that huge fan on the bottom was blowing out but you're right it is sucking in and then it's probably blowing out well 
No, it wouldn't be blowing out at all. It would just be exhausting from the back, wouldn't it? So, intake, and then just sort of exhaust out the back. That's what I have to imagine it's doing. All right. So, now that that's cleared up, we're gonna mount this sucker. If anyone has any questions about why I bought the port parts that I did, or anything about computers, feel free to holler in chat. I dropped my screwdriver. Okay. Exhaust near the power cable, yeah. See, y'all, it's nice having friends that are technically savvy. I'd like to think that I'm technically savvy, but I know better. Man, y'all, when I built uh, Linda live on stream, that did not go well. And I've built many computers. I've built literally hundreds of computers because I used to have a job where I was just building like 30 computers a day. Um, but even for like personal friends and family, I've probably built at least 40 computers or so. Um, but yeah, that Linda build, that one did not go well. Um, mostly because of my own ignorance. Uh, it was one of the first AMD builds I had done in a long time. So there was lots of things that I did not understand. Um, things like why the CPU was reporting at an extremely high temperature, a temperature that was frankly ridiculous, and that's just because that's something that AMD does to make sure that the fan is spinning appropriately. That's not how hot your CPU actually is. They just over-report the temperature so that the CPU fan will spin up enough. I think that's dumb. I think that's a bad system. That is their system. Uh, no, that's a Threadripper. Uh, Linda is the name of the computer that runs the Stump Studio here, and it's the, f the first gen Threadripper, the one that has 12 cores, 24 threads. Um, and I also, on that first build, the one that we did live on stream, I attempted to, um, that was the first time I tried to use a all-in-one water-cooled Corsair fan system thing. These screws are having a hard time getting into this power supply. Um, and I no longer like all-in-one water blocks. I think they're lame. Because I ended up replacing that and getting a Noctua uh, air-cooled fan that was made for the Threadripper. And that thing outperformed it like crazy. Yeah, the thermal reporting, I just, I was losing my mind. I could not understand. Like, the CPU was reporting an insane temperature, and I was like, what is going on? Was the Corsair all-in-one supported for Threadripper? May have been too small. It was one of the officially supported ones. It was still a smaller one. Like, its, uh, it's block was still not one that was made for Threadripper. But AMD released a list when they first released Threadripper of water blocks that would work for it, and it was one of them. Um, and it worked. Like, the problem was that I still didn't understand the thermals. Um, so I think it would have been fine if I had opted to not replace it. Um, but before I learned about the way AMD does thermals, I had already ordered the Noctua one, and I replaced it anyway. And I'll just say, like, the Noctua is quieter. It perf it's even colder than the all-in-one water block was. Um, what's a water block? So, for cooling your CPU, you need a heat sink. Uh, traditionally, there's like a big heat sink that goes on top of the 
CPU, and then there's like a fan. But uh, what has been somewhat popular lately is manufacturers like Corsair create a block that you mount on top of your CPU, and it has a couple of tubes going to it, and those tubes run to a fan that's attached to the external side of your case, and those tubes carry water or some kind of liquid, um, and basically the fan that's connected to the external side of your case is cooling down that water, and that water is then running between your CPU and that fan, and it's just running cool water to the CPU in order to water cool it. And there's a lot of all-in-one units now, most of them made by Corsair, although there's other manufacturers now. Um, but Corsair is definitely, I think, the most popular manufacturer of them. Um, and I'll be, I'll be real, if you have a case that has enough airflow in it, I think a regular heat sink, a regular, um, yeah, just a regular uh, air-cooled fan is better than a all-in-one water-cooled block. If you are in a situation where you're trying to build a small form factor something and, uh, and you don't have room for the big giant heat sink, I can understand the need for water-cooled. And I will say that I think custom loops, custom made um, water cooled systems where people have big giant radiators and big tanks of liquid that keep the, the liquid really cold, those probably perform a lot better than the all-in-one systems. But the all-in-one ones, I, I don't know. I'm just not impressed anymore. Oh, Lavelin, you've got a, you've got one of those. Yeah, but Lavelin, you have the biggest case in the world. You could have fit like an entire house fan in your Cosmos too. I use the Noctua NHD15. Um, I got it before I worked Corsair though. So I've heard nothing but good things in researching what. Um, what fan I need for my 9900K. Uh, I heard nothing but good things about the D15. Um, I also heard nothing but good things about... Urgh! The Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. I've heard that thermal wise, it's about on par to the D15. Um, and I got it because it will supposedly fit in this case. That's one of the things I haven't talked about yet. Uh, between the CPU to the th um, tempered glass side window on this case, there is a 160 millimeters of room. This fan is 159.3 millimeters tall. So that is 0 0.7 millimeters of free space. I've read posts on Reddit where people have said they've made it work with this case. So I'm confident, but I will say that the Noctua fan that I bought for Linda, and Linda uses the same case as this, it does not fit. The tempered glass window, um, I managed to make it close, but there's definitely some sides where it just sort of like, it's propped up a little bit, which is not great. Anyway, fingers crossed that fan works in this. Uh, we're about to mount the motherboard. Yeah, I think we're there. So, do, 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 what did I... I put it over here. <clears throat> All right. Gigabyte, Gigabyte uh, Z390 Aorus Pro has built-in I.O. shield, which I appreciate because I.O. shields are always kind of a... I always manage to cut myself on I.O. shields, actually. Bam. I think it's a pretty sexy board.
and I can't tell you the number of computers I've built way back when I was first building computers where I mounted the motherboard and then I looked on the back of it and I realized that I never installed the IO shield and then I had to undo a whole bunch of work. Man, this rear fan is mounted so close. Is this rear fan actually gonna hinder me from mounting this motherboard? It might. I might have to move the rear fan to be in an upward facing fan. Cause yeah, I don't think I can mount this motherboard with that fan there. All right, not a biggie, but yeah, that fan needs to be upward mounting. Integrated I.O. shield should be more standard, makes life so much easier. Yeah. see the Fantex logo on this fan is pointing me, so I want that logo to be pointing upwards once I remove this completely. JT Kramer, I shouldn't be watching this, but I am. Why? Are you wanting a computer for yourself, maybe? Or is it too late past your bedtime? Planning on building a computer soon, just as soon as I find a decent case. I mean, what kind of case are you going for? Because if you're looking for just sort of like your basic mid tower, I very much recommend this case, the Fantex P400S Tempered Glass Edition. It's less than a hundred bucks. I think it's got great cable management. that there. I'm having flashbacks of having to do this when I, uh, when I set up Linda. Oh, so who's that? Silent Red Bear with a five months, woo, a new computer build stream. I remember the other one you did a while ago with Ryzen? It was with Threadripper. It was with Threadripper when I built up Linda. And that VOD actually still exists on the Stump Live channel if anyone wants to watch me lose my mind trying to build that computer. It is almost, I think it is, a f over a four hour long stream. Which I'll also admit, I'm not going terribly fast on this stream. I'm chatting and getting distracted. Wasn't it Linda that destroyed your poor arm too? That's a great story. I forgot about that. Um, so when I built Linda, when Linda was done, and I was carrying Linda out to the garage. Uh, I I nearly dropped Linda. Um, this case, it has, I'm trying to remember what came out on it. Oh, it was this. I was holding this case down here and let's see if I can get it to do it. There's a um, removable dust cover that's actually not coming out. There it is. So it's this little slidey piece here. 
So I was holding Linda by the bottom there and that whole piece slid out on me. And so rather than letting the computer fall to the ground, I quickly moved my arm down underneath it and the whole foot of it scraped down my arm and there was a huge gash on my arm for, that uh, lasted like a month, I'm pretty sure. But I mean, there was no chance I was gonna let that computer drop to the ground. I would do it again. I would definitely, I would sacrifice my arm to make sure Linda did not break. All right, that is the fan top mounted. So, there we go. Let's flip this back around. Motherboard, come back to me. There we go. the days there used to be cases that I would buy way back in the day where like the middle peg instead of having like a screw slot would be like a little thing that prodded upwards and it would help you lock this this thing into place That's looking pretty good. We'll go to our accessory box. Oh yeah, this case comes with um, LED light strip if you're so inclined. And then these magnetic, magnetic vent covers, which we're now gonna use since we had to put the fan on the top. I've got a 3700K in my computer, hence why I'm thinking of a new one. I mean, here's what I'll say. I think that Intel's TikTok model, where they release a new generation every year, uh, they don't show enough progress to warrant that upgrade every single year, which is why I have still been fairly happy with my 4700K that I have in my current personal computer. Um, yeah, CPU-wise, I still think it's a good CPU, I don't think it uh, it bottleneck stuff. Oh, you work for Intel? Well, listen, are you on the team that determines whether or not they're going to do a TikTok upgrade every freaking year? Here's my thing. I I just don't think that they're showing the types of gains that would really warrant you to want to. It hasn't been, it, honestly, it hasn't been until AMD finally arrived with Threadripper that they're like, holy crap, we've got to establish ourselves as being fast and have a lot of cores, which is why the i9 finally uh, is something sort of new. It seems like for the longest time they've had four cores, eight threads, um, or two cores, four threads. Um, Anyway, that's my rant on Intel. But I guess what I'm saying is, I do feel like, I, and I'm sure that this 9900K is much faster than my 4770. Uh, but I just, I haven't been motivated to want to upgrade in a long time haven't felt the desire. Which to me speaks more to the fact that Intel has not, I don't know, upped the performance that much uh, in the generations that happened afterwards. 
Honestly, it was the Haswell upgrade that was the big micro-architectural micro shift. Most of the generations since haven't been all that stellar. I'll admit that I cannot remember the order of the generations. I think last generation, the uh, eighth generation, was KB Lake. Or was that Coffee Lake? Even still, I can't remember. Um, come on. Haswell was the 4000s. Gotcha. Yeah, I remember when the 4000 line came out. That was like, I, this is this is gonna be it. I need this. Did I select the wrong size screw here? Hold on, hold on. Am I being an idiot? Did I pick the wrong size screw? I hate that. No, this has to be the right size screw. Well, hold on. There's not enough of these other kinds. It has to be this one. They provided me enough of these larger ones to do like a power supply. But that's not enough to mount a motherboard. Yeah, so it has to be these other ones. Too many little screws? Can you build me a C? I cannot build you a PC, I'm sorry. I can barely build myself a PC. John Null with the 100 bits, please invest in a proper toolkit for yourself. And then I saw that Nightbot timed you out for five seconds for linking something, but uh, it's still in my uh, Streamlabs here. I can see you linked me to iFixit. Um, and okay, now I'm curious, John, what do you consider a proper toolkit? Like, I'm not going to use half of these... No, more than that. I'm not going to use... 80% of these tools. Why would I? There's so much in this toolkit. And, like, I get... This is, this is just their general toolkit. This is, like, what you use to, uh... Disassemble an iPad and stuff like that if you needed to. Um... But the major thing that I'm going to use in this toolkit is the screwdriver, which I already got. And if I need other tips, I can get other tips for it. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't need. I'm not that picky. To build yourself a PC, you really just need a Phillips head. But y'all, the... Uh, John here that just told me to uh, to buy that. He's been my buddy since high school, um, and he actually way back in the day, I uh, bought myself a PlayStation Two, like one of the first launch ones, I think. Um, or no, maybe it was a PlayStation Two that I'd had for a while, and I bought myself a mod chip, and then I bought myself a really bad soldering gun and then I asked my buddy John John come over you know how to solder right can you help me install this mod chip um, and the thing was this mod chip had like had like 30 different points that you had to solder and they were tiny tiny points um, 
and the solder gun that I bought was bad and dumb. And uh, and that installation ended with me buying another PlayStation 2. <laughs> Koodles! Koodles TV with the 14 months. Just noticed I had my sub waiting. Hey, why are you stopping at the 2070? Super nice build, by the way. So, I could not... I, I don't game 4K, uh, so I couldn't justify... 2080 i mean the 2080 is really good um and the 2080 ti is even better obviously but uh the 2080 ti it's been a bit since i checked but i'm almost positive it's like 1500 dollars something insane like that and the 2080 is like it's close to 900 dollars, isn't it uh i just i couldn't justify <laughs> that What I find insane um, is you'd think since the 2080 Ti is out that the 1080 Ti would go on sale or something. And maybe it already did, but if you look for at 1080 Ti prices right now, oh my god, they're like close to two grand. Like I don't understand. The Linda Linda has a 1080 Ti, and I'm pretty sure we didn't spend more than $700 for that video card. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was like $650, $700 bucks for the 1080 Ti. Maybe, maybe it was closer to $750. It was not more than that. Um, $1,300 for the 1080 Ti, aka overpriced AF. Why? Like, that's insane! I'll tell you what I do need, John. Since we're talking about things that I should buy to make my computer building easier. I need a screwdriver with a magnetic tip. That's something that everyone should have, by the way. It's just a good thing to have. Oh my god, this is an extremely complicated place to get to without a magnetic screwdriver, I'm realizing. if I can there we go Nvidia had a rough 2018 because of it mm. oh sorry you're talking I didn't necessarily these crypto mining still taking heavy advantage of the GPU market have been following Cryptocurrencies crash hard. NVIDIA had a rough 2018 because of it. I mean, yeah, that's part of the reason NVIDIA crashed. I'd say NVIDIA also crashed. I mean, yeah, it's part. It's because of cryptocurrency, but NVIDIA's stock price was insanely inflated. Like, if you looked at NVIDIA's stock price when it went from, like, $60 to, like, 200 something or did it, get, did it get over 3 I can't remember. Um... Like, there was no reason for it to go up that high. So it had to crash at some point, and it crashed around the same time that cryptocurrency crashed. Um, but video cards still seem to be inflated, and it's not because of cryptocurrency. It's just because this generation is still new, and people are willing to buy at stupid prices. And I put this... Your stupid screw. All right, John. I'm gonna be real with you. I could use those tweezers that were in that fi I fix it kit. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I take it all back, John Bell. All right. Silent Red Bear asks, so why the new one? So the, uh, I mentioned earlier, but my current computer um, is, most of its parts are about six years old. This isn't replacing the computer that we use for Stumped. That computer is Linda, that computer is still amazing. This is replacing my personal gaming system, which is about six years old. 
Now to get the screw by the CPU power pins, which is like the most pain in the ass one. Uh, I'll admit, because I mounted the fan there, it does not make it much easier. Thanks to you guys, I started playing Dauntless, and I love it. Right on. I saw that they have a cool PAX fireworks thing that you can get if you type in a code. Why use an NVMe M.2 and solid state drive? Why not just the M.2 and a mechanical? Well, the M.2 is going to be for um, Windows and my major applications. And then the two terabyte is going to be for all of my game installations. And I don't want those on mechanical. Um, and I'm kind of I'm kind of excited to have a computer that has zero mechanical drives in it. This is going to be my first computer that has no mechanical drives in it, and yeah, that's that's a good it's a good feeling. This freaking screw is going to take forever to get to, and I hate it. Okay, hold on, hold on. Nope, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. Okay, come on. Let's try it like this then. Damn it. Where'd you go, screw? Excuse me? Screw? Um... What? this at all. Where'd that screw go? The screw is going to come back, like I'm going to say F it in a second, and then like one week later after this computer is running just fine, that screw is going to find a way to short out my computer. Is it stuck under the motherboard? No, I think it's stuck under the, um, the I.O. shield. Right next to the VRM. This computer is off to a good start. It just fell though. Like, there's no way it could have gotten wedged that hard.
Can you see it through the back? No. Like... Wait, wait, did I just hear it though? Hold on, I hear it. Oh! Down the headset. Got it. Huzzah. I'm gonna try to install the screw this way. The screw is the worst! All right, y'all. How the hell do I get this screw in there without a magnetic screwdriver? Oh, so John, thank you for those 10 bits. Ah. I have a dumb idea, but I don't want to do it. Let's do it.
hate this. It's, I hate you, screw, and I will kill you. Oh, my God. You hear me, screw? I will be the end of you. Silent Warlock cosplay with the 100 bits. Magnetic screwdriver might be Ash's next gift. Thank you. All right, y'all. I'm just slowly losing my mind, that's all. Don't worry. Don't worry about me. Okay. You know what? We're gonna use a different screw. We're gonna not breathe. There you go. Almost there. Oh shit. Yes. F yes. All it took was some determination and getting rid of this bastard screw. This one. This one's a bad screw. Never again. <sighs> All right, that's the motherboard mounted. Ugh. I also ended up using a different bit so that uh, the screw could sort of get wedged into the screwdriver as I was placing it. Goes on. It's going like this. Aha. Okay. Okay. Oh. Um. 
Okay, at this point, I like to do the CPU power because that's a pain in the butt if you don't do it um, before you put in your heatsink. You should definitely always do that before you put in your heatsink. So. <clears throat> That's one of them. Here's the other, perfect. Do, 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 do. CPU power. Needs to run up here. There we go. There's one. And then the other one. When I had to replace my last power supply, it took me something like 20 minutes to get the hookup for the case LEDs unplugged. So, I'll admit, I'm, I'm a big sucker for like viewing videos of super sexy cases that have lots of lights and lots of bling and lots of stuff like that. But at the same time, I'm very utilitarian. So, um, I know that at some point I'm going to want to be getting into my case and unplugging stuff and I never want to have to deal with more than I have to. Um, okay. How do I want to go about doing this? Because good god, this is an awkward position. vaguely remember having struggles with this with Linda too because of this fan placement having to be on the top now. I actually wonder if I could put the fan back on the side. I feel like there's room. I'm gonna unscrew the fan again. This is like, we're wasting time, but... Stump Rick, 100 bits, you're not done with this yet? That's okay, boo. Still miss your face. Oh, thank you, buddy. Uh, no, I'm not done with this. Do you remember, it took me four hours to build Linda. Thankfully, the video that I have going out tomorrow doesn't go out until one, so I'll probably edit that tomorrow. Also, y'all, I'm super stoked for this weekend, not only because I have a new computer, but because I did not realize until today that I have Monday off. Um, Monday's Martin Luther King Day, that's a federal holiday, but I'm not used to businesses taking that off. I've not worked a job in a long time that closed for business on Martin Luther King Day, but the uh, place that I'm working now works a lot with the federal government. It's not part of the federal government, but it works a lot with them. Um, I, I, what? I said I miss your face? Rick, don't tell me to go to jail. Anyway, I have Monday off, I'm super excited. Oh, so Rick, how did you like, um, how'd you like Rosario's? I think I saw Jasmine post pictures of there. I assume that you went with her as well. What did you guys end up getting and how'd you like it? Or Jazz, Jazz, you can tell me as well. What did you guys end up getting at Rosario's? For those that know, Jazz and Rick are down in San Antonio right now for PAX South. And me and Jazz have only ever been to San Antonio once before for a wedding. We went to this place called Rosario's that was like, oh my god, it's like the best Tex-Mex food I've ever had in my life. Okay. I can make this fit again. Yep. I just had to unplug it while I was mounting. But this is much more convenient. I like having it over here instead. Whoa! 
Oh my god. Drac just gifted five subs. Thank you so much. Drop that hype for, get, for Drac. And drop a bunch of bears for our new subs. Welcome. about to get cold in San Antonio. It sounded like it was nice. Jasmine was telling me it was like 60. You guys were walking the river walk. I like that river walk there. When we were there, we were there in like September, I think, and it was muggy and hot and wasn't the best. Jay Kramer, you might get down to zero degrees Fahrenheit this weekend. Do you mind me asking which region of the world you're in, Jay Kramer? Massachusetts. Is that outside the norm for Massachusetts? I mean, I guess it is. That's, that's particularly cold for East Coast. I dropped a fan screw, and my carpet is kind of black. Oh, I see it though. Haha. <laughs> Bam. Okay, that's gonna make mounting. Or plugging in these CPU things so much easier. There we go. There's one, there's eight, and now I need an additional four. side. We got the fan on the side again as well. That makes me happy. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, other things. Before we do the CPU fan as well, I think we need to do the M.2 and the RAM. Um, let's do M.2. I've never mounted an M.2 drive before. I'm excited. Let's do it. You guys cannot see a lot of what I'm doing.
screw for the M.2 that I don't want to lose. Heat shield for the M.2. It's got this... It's got an um, adhesive on it as well. Okay. Um, so, this guy is what we're about to be mounting. This is a 480 gigabyte Corsair um, MP300 NVMe M.2 drive. Uh, for those of you out there that don't know what an M.2 drive is, they're somewhat new. Um, I mean, they've been out for a few years now, but they haven't really caught on um, in mainstream builds, so not everyone knows what they are. Um, I assume that most people know there's big mechanical hard drives, then there are smaller laptop size uh, solid state drives, and that most people understand that solid state drives are faster. Um, they run off of flash memory, they don't have any moving parts, and a normal mechanical hard drive has read speeds of about 150 megabytes per second. Solid state drive has read speeds on average of about 500, 550 megabytes per second. M.2, um, it's like 2000? Sixteen hundred megabytes per second. Yeah. This is what it looks like all on its own. And to mount it. Boom, it's in. And actually, this is a shorty. I, I should have mounted this. Um, yeah, y'all, I'm actually thinking I should have mounted this at the one underneath. It's not too late for that. I think I'm going to. Okay, unmounted. I'm gonna put this back. Going to grab this screw and this heat shield. I thought that this was one of the longer M.2s, but it's actually a shorter one. So. And so what's going to happen is that uh, this M.2 drive, it uses, um, the reason it goes so much faster is that a solid state drive essentially maxes out the, the bandwidth limitation that SATA provides because solid state drive uses a SATA connector. Um, but M.2 plugs in near the PCIe connectors, and so it essentially uses the PCIe bus to get those crazy fast speeds. There we go. Mounted. Now I just need to screw that down. But first... Alright, so it's got this heat spreader. My motherboard comes with these heat spreaders for the M.2 drives. Um, because I hear that these M.2 drives get hot. Alright. Here we go. Screw time. go. That's mounted. Alright, that wasn't so bad. Um, 
Okay, let's, I think, tackle the RAM, and then we're gonna tackle the CPU. And then it's gonna be GPU and cords. Probably we'll do, we'll do the cords before the GPU, because the GPU sort of gets in the way. Um, okay, so RAM, 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 RAM. Do, 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 do. There we go. A couple packs of G Skill Trident G, uh, Trident Z uh, 3600 DDR4. We're going for 32 gigabytes total. Tackling the RAM seems like a bad idea. Listen, Ben. First, you were, I thought you were being serious, like, oh, why should I not be doing RAM? And then I realized you were making a joke. Shut up, Ben. Ah! Uh. Ah! Uh. I need to stop throwing things. I'm making a real mess. Um, this RAM looks pretty slick. It's not the LED glowing RAM that all, is all the rage these days. Linda actually has some of that um, glowing RAM. This is just normal RAM. Okay. I believe you want the G. If you're using G skill RAM, you want the G facing downwards. Boom. With RAM, you really want to make sure you get a very firm connection. Do not want to go gentle on it. Um, we recently, or we're still in the process of it actually, but we're upgrading everyone in Stump's RAM to 32 gigabytes at the moment. So we just recently did that with Jasmine. And after I did that, her computer wouldn't boot. And after lots of fiddling, I just had to reseat the RAM because it wasn't seated firmly enough. Out of curiosity, does anyone bother putting these stickers on the front of their computer builds? Anyone out here that builds their own computers, do any of you bother using these stickers? And if so, does it make your computer look cool? Way back in the day, like way back in the day, when uh, I was first building my first computers, I, w I might put on that, like, you know, AMD Athlon or Intel Inside sticker. But these days, the cases are so... they just look much cleaner, obviously, without those stickers. All right, that's all the RAM mounted. Huh. Oh, God, it's a mess. Uh, okay. CPU time. Uh, I'll say this right off the bat. I hate Threadripper um, CPU mounting solution. Intel mounting solution, infinitely easier. AMD, you need to just outright steal the mounting solution from Intel, because it's just better. <sighs> Alright, I'm opening up this weird-ass D12 CPU. Should probably keep this D12 for something, though. Oh, 
open. There we go. Okay, so this needs to be cut open as well. Like, really? How does this... Where does this detach? I guess I'll find out. I scratched the cube. How do you open? Ah! Okay. I did it. <laughs> this, thing's, this thing's stupid. <laughs> it's cool. Like, it's obviously a nice effect, but the only thing in it is this little box where the CPU is. This packaging looks so annoying. I mean, you're not wrong. I should do something with this, but they only there's only enough room in here for that CPU, so I don't know what to do with it. Um... Anyway, here it is, the Intel Core i9-9900K. Guess I'll find out, blows up. I think it's meant to be a less wasteful way of protecting the CPU. No, I mean, previously they just had it in a cardboard box. like. It was bigger than this, obviously. Um, it was it was a thicker box, but I mean, this is this is a bunch of plastic. This is wasteful. <laughs> okay. Uh, so those of you that have never mounted an Intel CPU before. What you want to look for is on the corner. If my camera will focus, ah, uh, nope, you're just not going to focus, huh, camera? No. Hmm. How about you? Will you focus? Yes, you will. In the corner, you can see that little arrow. That's what you want to look for. On the top of the CPU, there's two notches as well that tells you what the upper side is. But there's that little arrow in the corner. Uh, there is an arrow on the CPU socket as well. But really, I always just line up those notches. Bam. That's done. You close the lid. And then you latch it in place. That's it. CPU mounted. Um, Oh, hey, I'm not in focus. Camera! And then you spread the mayo on to cool it down. <laughs> I do have some thermal paste that I need to apply now before I put on the heat sink. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I need to... that I need to mount... before... I attempt to do the CPU heatsink. Because I know that this heat CPU heatsink is big. I know that it's going to go up very close to the top of this. Um, but I think it'll be fine. Okay, let's do it. Uh, CPU heatsink time. Okay. Yeah, get any fiddly fan cables plugged in first. So that's the thing. Uh, one of the reasons I like the, these uh, Fantex, um, this Fantex case is that they've already sort of managed the fan cables behind 
onto the rear of the case. And so I'll just plug in the case fans to one of the eight um, fan controllers that are on the side. Um, I will want to plug in the CPU fan into the CPU fan header, which is in a fairly close position. Um, so I may want to do that before actually mounting it down. Good God, this thing's huge. Oh my God, okay. Oh, whoa, whoa! Is this magnetic? <gasps> this is the best heat sink in the world. I immediately endorse this heat sink because it provided me a Phillips head that's magnetized. Why didn't I know that that was there that would have saved me like 20 minutes earlier? Okay. That's so nice, though. Um, wait, what? I just pulled out this fan from the middle of this. I thought this fan's supposed to be in there. I should probably read the instructions. I've never used this fan before. I know it's a good one. Um, at least all the reviews rave and rave about this fan, but I've never used it. Um, how do you mount this particular fan into here? You know what, there's probably something in this box. So let's read the instructions. And then let's see what's in the box. Yeah, there's some stuff to mount that fan. That's how you do it. Okay. Um. So yeah, I just realized because this, th this this thing has two fans, technically. And only one of them is going to be controlled by the CPU fan. Sort of wonder how that works. Uh, Russian, Polish, French, Espanol, English, and German. Okay. English. Oh, so, don't take my advice on builds. I once seated the RAM wrong way around and didn't notice until I smelled ozone when the PCU didn't when the PC didn't post the first time on boot up. And since you smelled that, I assume some capacitors blew up. Um, which... Can that happen from RAN being seated the wrong way around? That seems crazy. Uh, okay. Okay, so that's for... I'm looking for socket... Crap. Which socket are you? It's like 2011, I think? Hey. 
motherboard box. What socket are you? LGA 1151. Okay, so these are the instructions I want here. Not gonna lie, this looks a little bit complicated. Is there really not a back plate? No, 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 there's gotta be a back plate. Let's see everything that's in here. So, we've got an AMD bag we can disregard. And then we've got the Intel bag. And then we've got that, and then we've got our thermal paste, and we've got a couple of screws that I assume we're going to need. Um, okay, I'm going to put the couple of screws over here. Bam. Our music stopped. Okay, yeah, there's a back plate. So let's move that and let's move that. Backplate looks reversible to me. Um, the only pre PC tradition I recommend is a blood sacrifice. It's always worked for me. You're not wrong. I don't think I've ever built a PC that I didn't bleed into. But there's a first time for everything. I would love it for this one to be the first. Okay. Bam, okay, that's how that fits on. Um, I see, and then those screws go through the back side. Um, oh, perfect, can I use this as a tray? Not really. Who's talking to me? John! When was the last time you installed an optical media drive in your PC? Phobos, my current computer had an optical media drive at one point. Uh, then I replaced its case, and I didn't. Jasmine's computer still has an optical media drive, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, uh, of the recent computer builds that I've done for friends, um, does Rick have one? I don't think Rick has one. Price does not have one, I don't think. Um, Linda does not have one, the computer over there. Uh, this computer obviously doesn't, and my current computer currently does not. Um, and then, like, yeah, all the, the friends and family computer that I've built recently, they don't. It's not something you need. I install... I install Windows via USB uh, thumb drive now, and I can't think of much that my friends or family would miss by not having an optical media drive. Like, you could argue, oh, I wanted to watch that DVD movie or something, but if you have internet, then I assume that you can find another way of watching what you want to watch. Um... So 
how does this work? Does it screw on like that? Oh! And then does that still leave space? It does. Okay. So we're going to use these long screws. One, two, three, and four. Perfect. There we go. As Ash said, it's very traditional to have a new PC that doesn't post. Open it up, double check, and not change anything, but scrape your knuckles against a sharp edge and have it boot flawlessly from then on. I feel like Linda did something similar. I was like banging my head against the wall with Linda um, when we were first setting up Linda on stream. And I'm pretty sure we couldn't get Linda to boot, and I feel like I didn't change anything. I was just fiddling around, and then Linda booted. I always hate it. Like, I, I want to know what the issue was. Why a computer won't boot. Do, do a hydrate. Thank you, Firestar. Uh, okay. Nice tunes. I love Anachronist RGB. It's a good one. I forget where I learned about it. Oh, you know where I learned about it? Um, if you guys don't follow Punches Bears on Twitter, you should. He posts very funny creations of bears. Um, but oftentimes he posts images like in progress GIFs and stuff, and the soundtracks that he uses are really good. And this is one of those soundtracks. Okay, so that's the back plate mounted for the CPU. Now, I think I see how this mounts. So we're going to bend this back over. We need both of these things. I don't want them like that, it looks like. Oh, you know what? It's time for magnetized screw driver. 100%.
magnetized screwdriver, you failed me. I miss anything good? Uh, Sir Crest, did you see me freaking out trying to get a screw out of the case? Because that happened for a while. That was pretty good. That was ages ago at this point. Beyond that, it's been fairly smooth sailing, I feel like. We've got the CPU mounted. We've got the RAM mounted. We're about to mount the fan. It's gonna be a good old time. You learned about Anachronist from me? I posted in the Discord a while ago. I do. It's one of it's one of my uh, favorite albums from last year. I don't even know if it came out last year, but I learned about it last year. I'll tell you y'all, one of the things I've been listening to the most lately, it's the new Spider-Man. Into the Spider Verse soundtrack. That soundtrack is awesome. Oh, yeah. We definitely would have had problems trying to mount the M.2 drive after mounting the CPU if we were using that M.2 slot that was closest to the CPU. This mounting situation is practically pressing right up against the M.2 slot, which I don't necessarily like. I think that is a sort of fronting on this M.2 slot's territory. I'll say that the uh, Noctua fan that I have on Linda with that for that Threadripper build, that Noctua fan is so massive that it almost presses against my video card. Like, it's very close. Um... Okay, so with this, I believe the way this is done is you remove this fan, the middle fan. Then you take this, you slot it so that it's centered, like so. And then you position that underneath those two screws. But first, I need to put some thermal paste in. There we go. I know everyone, or at least all techie nerds, they have different schools of thought about how to apply thermal paste. Some people go by the just put it like a pea size drop in the center. Other people say to like just smear it all over. I have always subscribed to drawing an X and then drawing a line through that X. So it's like three lines. Yeah, that should work. Okay. So here's how this is going to work. Um, I'm going to put this big honking thing on there. And then we need to screw in these two screws. We need to remove this plastic here first. Bam. That looks like a lot. 
I'll admit, uh, I also always subscribe to the, I don't care if it's too much. Um, Now let's see if I can zoom in even more here at this moment. Okay. So, I think we're just going to go for it, y'all. Alright, that's on. This is why they provide you with the screwdriver because this is actually kind of a pain to do. I actually have to screw this in at an angle. It doesn't really seem like it's going because it's going in at an angle. Oh god. That's not good. Oh, oh, okay. Got it. Alright, that's one threaded. And now the other side, I just want to get it threaded and then we can tighten them down. Oh, good god, the whole bracket got messed up. Oh, that sucks. Am I gonna have to... Where did the screw go? There it is. Got it. All right. Damn it. Okay.
Well, I've heard nothing but good things about this fan. This mounting system sucks. Anyone else think the fan might be beyond the limits of the case? I want you all to take your bets. I have read posts on Reddit that say it, they have done it. It's going to be close. It's going to be very close, actually. Using the right screws here? Yeah. Oh, is that thread in? I can't tell actually. No, come on. Dude, I hate this mounting system. This just sucks. Oh my god. Oh my god, y'all. 
there were these caps here. That's totally where the screwdriver is meant to go down. Okay, let's get this lined up again then. See the hole. Yep. Yep. That's the red to know. Uh. <laughs> Lave Lane, I've probably done that on every single computer I've ever built. Is I got everything ready. I'm super excited. I try to turn it on. I have a moment of panic and then I realize, oh, I, I didn't turn on the power supply switch. Um, yeah. That was a common occurrence. Uh, where did I put the other screw? Don't do this to me now. There it is. Okay. So, this side now. looks vaguely lined up. This side is a lot harder to get to. Right now I'm just trying to put the screw onto the screwdriver. Crap. And the screw has fallen. Where has it fallen? Dude, screw, where did you go? No, come on.
God, I think I finally got it. Heating's mounted. Good God. <sighs> so, I hate CPU mounts that use this method. Um, there is a brand called Cyborg, I think it was called. Um, that's the heatsink that's in my, pr my previous computer and in Jazz Rick and Price's um, computer. And while that one's still a little bit of a tricky mounting situation, it's ages, just light years better than this. <sighs> okay. So this fan. in and this fan has to mount in a annoying way too now This actually isn't too bad. Uses these little, these little hooky guys. Can you guys sort of see those? Uses these to, uh, to uh, hook into the holes of the fan. Uh, this side's gonna be a real pain in the butt though, isn't it? side.
Okay. Got that. Oh my god. Why, Case? Why do you have to make this so much more difficult than it needs to be? So close to being done with this. Okay, there's one side. Oh, perfect. Yes. That's it. Oh! We're getting there, y'all. We're getting there. CPU fan header for one of the fans. And then I think I'm going to plug in the other fan down here. Normally fans have a little arrow on them to tell you which way the airflow is going. I just want to make sure that these fans are actually pointing the right way.
Damn it, be quiet. Where is your arrow that tells me which direction the airflow is? You know, it, it is mounted the same way as my other case fans, so I believe the airflow is flowing the same direction. Very hard to tell though. All right. Okay. We're now going to work on plugging in the remaining case IO, and then we're going to mount the GPU and then the har uh, the SSD. And there's not much more after that, honestly. Will it boot on the first attempt to power on? What are the odds, chat? What are the odds that it actually uh, posts the first try? Odds are sixty four percent exact. <sighs> okay. We're going to work on front IO. And I've just realized this is a gigabyte board, so it probably has a little thingy, a little dongle for me to do with my front I.O. Um, SATA cable, SATA cables, M.2 screws. Here it is, the G connector. Are red USB ports high power USB ports? Not necessarily. Uh, red USB ports are usually USB 3.1. Blue are USB 3.0. Red indicates USB 3.1 or 3.2, usually in most cases. Hard 
drive light. There we go. And then power switch. Who still uses the motherboard speaker connector? Like, why? I say that and I realize that my motherboard does not have the, um, at least I'm not seen. It's n most newer motherboards I've had have little LED screens on them that tells me a postcode if something goes wrong. This one doesn't seem to. Okay. G connectors getting plugged in. HD audio. There we go. Front panel audio is plugged in. on motherboard power. You still use it? It helps you figure out what's going on when you first try to turn on something and it doesn't work. I mean, okay, I get that. But my, I haven't seen a case in a while that actually has a speaker. I guess that's what I'm saying. I was actually trying to find a case that had um, USB... 3.1 on the front or USB type C on the front and there's some but most of them are pretty gaudy and expensive um, like those are like the super fancy cases I just wanted a case like this but that had USB 3.1 or USB type C on the front because this motherboard does offer a connector for it I wouldn't mind using it too because I've never used that type of connector before USB 3.0 connector getting plugged in. I really don't like the USB 3.0 connector. So I hope that US, this newer, smaller USB 3.1 connector becomes more prevalent because it seems a lot easier to plug in. And just a lot, it's, it's a lot smaller. The USB 3.0 front panel connector is very big it's very large it makes it hard to make your cable management look good because it has to stick up so much okay there's all of that uh okay what's left what's left I think it is just video card and solid state drive and cable management. Let's do video card. So, GeForce RTX. No longer going by GTX, this is RTX.
Wait, I might actually I might actually need this information here. Um, I was given a couple of games with um, this CPU and with this graphics card. I'm not sure if I need to keep the serial number information in order to redeem them. So I'm not going to throw those into the pile quite yet. What is all this stuff? Driver CD, obviously. Um, Lucky the Dragon Computer Workshop. Oh my god, it's a comic. I vaguely, I have small memories of MSI making this character, Lucky the Dragon. But this is pretty cute. Good on you, MSI. I'm a fan of MSI's graphics cards. I feel like they always do... Oh, these are coasters. These, uh, these are cutouts. You can have these as coasters if you're into that kind of thing. Um, okay. I'm a fan of MSI's graphics cards. I think they usually do a very good balance between having really good cooling and having a smaller than average form factor. Not like a low low profile form factor, but just like, even though this graphics card is effing huge, it, believe it or not, is smaller than like the EVGAs and ASUSes of the world. And they're usually pretty quiet too. When you get a new video card, you always want to try to peel off stuff around the fan. Just like feel around and see if there's any of those plastic covers on them. Because those can end up coming loose one day and hindering your airflow. That's a pretty sexy video card, I gotta say. And actually, I'm just now realizing it is kind of on theme. You know what? My whole motherboard and case and everything is pretty on theme for the black and white look. That was not intentional, but I'm actually very happy about that. Ugh. Okay, I'm going to need to have these two slots open. Oh yeah, so now that I'm doing this, I'm realizing the one design... Zoolander, which uh, Fantex case is this? Uh, this is the Fantex P400S uh, Tempered Glass Edition. I've used this case three or four or five times now. Linda has one, my previous computer has one, this computer's having one, and I've built a couple for friends that use them. Um, it's my favorite case at the moment. Um, I always get different colors too. This is my first time doing a black and white edition. Um, my one thing that I don't like about the design of this case is the... Let me see if I can flip this around for you guys. Where the rear slots are, there's this rear slot guard that you have to loosen two screws on and then slide it out of the way for you to insert new cards into. It's just a little bit annoying. end of the day not that big a deal just a little bit annoying so now this can raise up come on there we go that should be enough hopefully um, this is one of the tallest cards I've actually ever used notice how the slot ends here, yet there's still a good inch and a half or two inches left of this card. That's an effing big card, man. Alright. Cards are getting so big that motherboards now have to reinforce the PCIe slots in order to better support them.
puts the video card in. Who was that? Whoa! Fireball Fire BS with a thousand bits. Thank you so much. Everyone drop that hype for Fireball. That's really nice of you. Oh, so did the music stop? Fireball, how's your night going? What are you up to? Hope everyone's having a good Friday. Is everyone, uh, what's everyone's weekend plans, actually? Get a chemistry test fireball. Tai Chi, you have to do work this weekend. That's too bad. Ben, you're watching The Punisher? And your town's getting about a foot of snow? I'm jealous, although depending on you and your situation, that may be a pain in the ass for you. I know that snow is not everyone's cup of tea, but Portland, we don't get snow terribly often. And Jasmine really loves snow. Oh, so I've never watched even Punisher season one. I admit that his arc on, I think it was season two of Daredevil, didn't really grab me. So I never really got into it. And I still haven't seen the newer Luke Cage season. I haven't seen um, Daredevil season three. Is that out yet? I don't know. I haven't watched Iron Fist, and I haven't watched Defenders. Um, I loved Daredevil Season 1. Daredevil Season 2 was okay, but I thought it ended in kind of a dumb place. Um, I don't know why I'm suddenly like reviewing Marvel Netflix shows. What shows are people, like, actually hyped on right now? Because I do need something new to watch. I'll say what I'm watching right now that I am genuinely hyped on, and I will recommend to anyone, is Counterpart. If you like, um, kind of like spy thriller dramas, um, it's a show that's on Showtime that stars J.K. Simmons, and J.K. Simmons is playing two of himself. He's playing two completely different versions of himself so you get twice the J.K. Simmons and it's great um, season 3 is incredible that's good to hear actually maybe I'll give that a shot um, okay we need power for this uh, massive beast of a video card we need the solid state drive mounted and hooked up with a SATA cable and then cable management and that's that's about it y'all i'm actually y'all i'm pretty stoked at how black and white everything is i didn't realize the video card was going to be black and white that's like if i had really thought about it i would have gotten some black and white ram and then it would have been everything would have been on theme um Okay, so, yeah, I think we want, well, maybe we want the power coming from the top still, so that it doesn't have a chance to interfere with the fans of the GPU. <sighs> Seems like a lot of work for one actor. I mean, J.K. Simmons is just awesome. And what's great about the first season, they're in the second season now. Um, 
but what's great about the first season is there's quite a lot of jumping back and forth between his two characters, and you can really tell. Like, he does a good job at playing two different personalities of himself. Okay. There we go. Okay. So then... We want the six pin... Now, and then the eight pin, come on. There we go. There we go. And that's GPU power. pretty happy with that. I was worried about having the cable go on the underside of it because these fans are basically right there and I don't want to have anything that the fan could whir um, and make a rattling sound past. Uh, let's mount up the two terabyte solid state drive. <sighs> Love JK Simmons, Cave Johnson's the best, right? You know, I didn't really, did any of you guys know that JK Simmons is the yellow M&M? In all of those Eminem commercials. You know the one where like Santa comes down the chimney and he's like, oh, he does exist. Oh, they do exist. The yellow Eminem is J.K. Simmons. Um, and the red Eminem is the, uh, I forget his name. It's Frylock's voice. He also said, J.K. Simmons said, that that is his longest running role ever. Because he's been doing it for like 25 years, I think he said. Something like that. So now I'm mounting the solid state drive to this tray here. I actually want to mount this upside down now that I'm thinking about it. So this is a SanDisk um, solid state drive. It's two terabytes, I've never had a solid state drive this large before. I'm just, I'm super stoked about having a computer that has no mechanical drives internally. I keep saying internally, I keep specifying that because I did buy a four terabyte external USB three um, connected drive. And that mechanical hard drive is going to be my Plex library. For those of you that don't know what Plex is, it's a nice software that allows you to, um, if you have a library of of movies on your hard drive. It's um, it's able to sort of categorize those movies for you. And if you have something like a Chromecast on your TV, then you're able to sort of watch that library very easily on your different devices. Mouse, why have you done this to me? There we go. Man, we've been doing this for, what, about three hours now, folks? We're getting, getting close to the end of it here. Thank you guys so much for, uh, for hanging up, to, hanging out with me keeping me company. 
These builds can take a long time. screw Ben I really should be going to bed but here we are it's been super interesting well I'm glad if nothing else I hope to help educate people not educate but I hope I hope to at least demonstrate that doing this is not that difficult and that by doing this you will in fact save a lot of money and potentially future money if you ever have to troubleshoot a computer yourself you'll know what to look for okay Plugging in solid state drive power, which is going to be right there. Come on. Bend. All right. Solid state drive power's in. Uh, the nice thing about the Fantex is the two case fans here don't plug into the motherboard instead they plug into a SATA connector or they plug into some adapter and then you power both of them via SATA power BAM okay uh, and now a SATA cable is the only thing remaining to do Go with this right angle one. Should we? Yeah, we'll use right angle one. Okay. <laughs> oh, computer stuff on stumped. This is a crossover episode. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm loopy right now. That made me crack up. Um. All right. We'll go with the right angle SATA cable. You can generally get a computer twice as good for the price as you would pay a re uh, retail pre-built. That is 100% true. As I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, I spec'd out, after I bought all these parts, I spec'd out what this computer would have cost me on Digital Storm, which is a company that will build you custom computers, and it was about twice the price. And this is already an expensive computer. But I splurged. I splurged for myself. All right. SATA cable, and now... Here's the question. Where is my motherboard manual? So y'all, by using an M.2 have you ate? I ate bef right before we started streaming. I ordered myself some Thai food. Um, so, by using an M.2 hard drive, I have heard that it disables some of your SATA ports. So, I need to know which SATA ports got disabled. So, I'm reading the manual. That's what I'm doing. Will this replace Linda or what? No. Linda is for the Stump Studio. This is replacing just my personal gaming computer. Yes, this is the new Phobos. Phobos is the name of my personal gaming computer. My personal computer, its parts are about six years old. My personal computer is using, uh, yeah. My personal computer is using a uh, Intel 4770, which is about six years old now. This is it replacing the basement computer? Yep, my basement computer. That computer, Phobos, is um, is the computer that we started stumped with. It's 
installing an expansion card. Internal connectors, maybe internal connectors. Let's look at 15, page 15. Seda. M.2. Okay, so M.2 PCIe SSD. I don't know which ones are going to be disabled and which ones aren't, but I know that no matter what, as long as I pick SATA port 0, it will work, because that one remains enabled no matter what. And SATA port 0 is going to be... Closest to the video card, basically. I actually wonder if SATA port 5. Yes, SATA port 5 is also always connected. As is SATA port 4? Oh no, I still want to go for 0. Yeah, because it's always on no matter what. So, okay. Let's try to reach for 0. Now that the video card's here, it actually is kind of a hint. actually very much a hindrance. <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. This right angle connector is actually not what I want to be using. <laughs> Alright, where's the other SATA cable? Come to me. There you are. Ah! Alright. Alright, alright, alright. So, I had mentioned this earlier, but the reason I'm dealing with trying to figure out which SATA connector to use is that Did my phone just buzz? I don't know. Um, there's a limited number of PCIe lanes on this chip chipset, which is dumb considering this is an extremely high-end CPU and high this is like the newest From Intel. And it's also dumb because AMD has an insane amount of lanes with its Threadripper lineup. It's like 64. But there's only 16 lanes on this particular chipset. Which means that if you use an M.2 slot, some of your SATA connectors get disabled.
next. So right now the video card's in the way of the SATA connector that I wanted to plug in. I really should have dealt with that first before plugging in this uh, video card. But hey, that's me being a dummy. Wanderbots rating with a party of 107? Are you joking? What is up? Everyone from Wanderbot stream. What were you guys playing? How's it going? Everyone welcome. I'm Ash from Stumped and you have caught us in the middle of a computer building stream. Um, you can see my specs uh, over there in that corner. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, we're near the end of it. I hope. I hope we're near the end of it. We've been going for a while now. What were you guys up to? What were you guys playing? Okay. While True Learn, a programming game that I'm very bad at. Well, right on. Wander, how's your weekend looking, man? It's Friday. You got any big weekend plans? You do anything for the the holiday and whatnot? Boom. Got the SATA connector connected. I'll admit I think I connected it into number one instead of number zero, which is not exactly what I wanted, but... Yeah, it needs to go into number zero. God damn it. What Eclipse model is that case? This isn't the Eclipse. Wait, is this the Eclipse? Yeah, I guess this is the Eclipse. This is the Eclipse P400S. Boom! Now I got it into number zero. Oh, I'm Rel, that's your case as well. Yeah, this is the P400S uh, Tempered Glass Edition black and white color. Which I'm actually super stoked I went with black and white because most of my parts ended up being black and white and I didn't even like plan that. Oh, Super Bob asks holiday? Yeah, it's a, um, what is it? It's Martin Luther King Day on Monday. And shockingly, my work is taking that day off. I haven't worked a job in forever that took that day off. And so I'm super stoked. Oh, Wander, you're trying to very hard to find a place to move. Your apartment sucks. They're painting the lower floors and everything smells like paint here. That sucks. Those fumes can really get to you. Um, are you still considering moving out of state i don't know how much you've uh i don't know how much of that information is public or private so i'm sorry if i'm releasing information that you don't want to make public right now but maybe that's where you're looking maybe you're looking out of out of state i know we'd love to have you in the northwest Um, okay, okay, okay. I am done. Um, everything is plugged in. Everything is... No, not everything's plugged in. The SATA cable could really use going to this, solid, uh, this SSD. West Coast is best coast, that's right. that that's it so uh, now I'm just going to very quickly undo some of this Fantex velcro here and just wrap up some of this stuff yeah we found a place in Portland that looks great but I have to figure out if I want to rent it without seeing 
or t try to jam a trip to the area for touring on such a short notice, especially with the shutdown throwing wrenches into everything. I know, Jasmine was so worried about um, potential screw-ups with the, uh, the PAX South trip, worrying that TSA was going to cause major slowdowns and whatnot, you know? Um, but I didn't know that you were considering Portland. That would be awesome. It's certainly more affordable than our sister city, Seattle. Bam. Okay. And then we're going to tuck all of these cords under here. And we can make this look better, but that's... Because I have so few devices in this computer, this is what the back looks like right now. And so it's got these, uh, it's got these Velcro things. Let's see if I can actually zoom in this a little bit. Wah. It's got these Velcro things here that actually help cable manage a bit. But because I have so few devices, just this, uh, just this sand desk here, there's not a whole lot to cable manage, so I'm going to pop the side panel back on, and then we're going to put the tempered glass on the front, and then I'm going to hook up a monitor, y'all, and we're going to see if I broke this thing or not. I guess, yeah, Does ha, who's, who has placed their bets yet to see if the tempered glass fits with that massive heat sink fan that we have? Y'all placed your bets? You should. We were looking at Olympia up north originally, but the prices are largely the same, so we figured we'd aim a bit further south. That's how I find it usually. Any place that's considered a suburb of the major city, not that Olympia is necessarily a suburb of Seattle, but it's close. But like Portland, for example, a lot of people think, oh, we'll move out to a suburb where it'll be cheaper. But it's really not that much cheaper. There we go. Oh, Brenner, that's right. You are in Olympia. I always forget that. I know that you're. I knew that you were somewhere up in Washington. Oh, so Brenner, I didn't even know that you were in chat. Welcome. Okay. I don't know, now that I've tightened it down, I think it's going to fit, y'all. My bet is on it, it fitting. What's your bets? Moment of truth. Oh. It fits. So, for those that missed it, the distance in this case from CPU to tempered glass is 160 millimeters. That fan is 159.3 millimeters. So obviously, like, math-wise, that should work, but reality is always something different, and so it's very frightening on whether or not it's going to work or not. But I had read forum posts that said that they had done it in this case. I'm happy that those forum posts were not lies. Okay. You know what? I... well... I want to get the full effect. And then, you know what? Yeah, we're just going to be confident, y'all. We're just going to be confident that this is going to work. I'm going to screw this all on.
All right, last screw, y'all. It's the last time I'll ever have to do this. I won't have to take these screws out. Everything's gonna work perfect. It's gonna be great. I'm not jinxing myself. Imrail, did you do your own custom water cooling loop or did you buy one of those all-in-one? I ranted a bit at the very beginning of the stream about how I'm not a huge fan of those all-in-one units. Okay, that's it y'all. The computer's done. So I'm going to spend a minute, just like one minute, gathering all this crap that's on the table right now except for the computer. And then I'm going to set up a monitor and a keyboard and mouse, and then we're going to see it work. It's going to work.
Okay. So, got it all ready. I haven't plugged power into the computer yet, but I've got monitor running to the computer via HDMI, going through the RTX 2070. I've got USB keyboard, I've got wireless mouse, and I've got power. What do you think, chat? Odds of it, uh, odds of it posting? No, the power supply is not on yet. I'll do that once I plug in the power. But I'm hopeful that this posts, because I have to pee. So if this posts, then that's where we're going to end the stream. Probably going to end the stream here regardless, but it's going to post, right? <sighs> power supply turning on. I'm going to tilt the monitor up for y'all. Here we go. Yes, man. All right, y'all. Let's see if we it'll accept our XMP XMP uh, profile. It is detecting all four sticks of RAM. That's fantastic. Um, okay, so DRAM status XMP profile one. How do I tell memory frequency? Okay, so. That's weird, just clicking this changes the profile. These bios are kind of easy mode. How do I change that from, I don't want easy mode. I want not easy mode. Classic, F2. Hey, that's what I'm used to seeing. Uh, advanced memory settings. Enter. There we go. Uh, so X extreme XMP profile one. Yes, profile one. So now we're just going to save an exit, save an exit setup. Enter, save. We're going to let it reboot, and then we're going to go back into BIOS and see. We'll first see if it posts after that new RAM profile, but then also see if it's running at the correct RAM frequency. And then maybe in BIOS we'll also see if it's detecting our M.2 and our solid state drive. Uh, okay. Looking good, looking good. Uh, let's go F2 easy mode. 3600. That's what we want to see. Um, okay. We know it's detecting the 2 terabyte solid state drive M.2. It is detecting the, um, M2A and M2M. Okay, I am going to just read this manual real quick about what the difference is between M2A and M2M, because I know I saw that. Um, well, you know what, that's just the... That's just the size of the connector. That's all that is, right? Yeah, that's all that is. That's all that is. Oh my god, y'all! It posted! It posted and it's seen all of our devices. Uh, 
Um, John with a thousand bits, power on, self test, ready for provisioning. Thank you very much, John. There we go. You can't see a whole lot. There's a lot of glare going on there, but <sighs> what is neat, this MSI logo is changing color. That's kind of cool. There is some LED action going on on the motherboard itself on the top and the bottom of the um, dim slots for the RAM. There is some LEDs that are sort of cycling through some colors right now, I think. Oh, so the chipset itself has an LED. Honestly, if I can set all of those colors myself, I might just set them all to be pure white. I think that would be kind of cool. Oh, oh! I also just noticed the very back of the case. This is dumb. Let's see if you guys can see this. The very back of the case here, this is an LED that's changing color as well. Um, the front of this case, if you guys have never seen this Fantex case before, this is the, uh, the same case that Linda is using. Um, there's an LED glow happening at the bottom, and then this button as well is an LED thing. And if you press, I want to make sure I'm not going to press the wrong button. I think it's this button. Yeah, there we go. You can cycle through the colors. There is a way to turn off the colors entirely as well. I thought there was a solid white one. But I could be mistaken. I kind of like that blue. That blue's not bad. Okay. Good God, y'all. It's been a long stream. What's our uptime looking like right now? Uh, whew. I wonder if you can sync the color changes to say your music player. Well, what you can do with all these devices, the um, motherboard itself has a couple of inputs for LED controllers. So the case itself, you can plug its LEDs into the motherboard and the video card I believe has a connector for that as well you can plug that into the motherboard and you can control all of those different colors via the motherboards control the color software um, that's a fairly common thing these days on motherboards that have a lot of LED lights yeah we've been going for three hours and 40 minutes that is shorter time than Linda I'm also super happy to see that the CPU temperature is idling at 25 degrees Celsius. That is a good, good fan going on there. Woo! Y'all, it's been a long one, but thank you so, so, so much for keeping me company during this long, long stream. Um, let's see here. It is 11 p.m., People are at PAX West. Um, Jazz and, and Rick are at PAX West at the moment. Um, so what I'm getting at is that tomorrow and Sunday, I don't know if streams are happening. Um, I might stream tomorrow, but I'm not going to make that a definite thing um, because I want to spend some time with this computer and I just want to get some house chores done and just sort of enjoy this weekend but um if there's stuff that i feel like playing like there is the new season um of season of diablo 3 if people are interested in watching me play that i might play that um if there's other stuff that i feel like playing i might play that uh, i did get a couple of free games i think 
I, I got a free copy of Anthem with this video card, which I'm super stoked for. I'm, Anthem's my number one most hyped game. Um, but I also got a free copy of Battlefield 4, which I'll admit... Or not Battlefield, Battlefield Black Ops 4. Um, which I'll admit I have little to no interest in, but I might check it out. Um, anyway, I guess that's my very long-winded say long-winded way of saying don't know if streams are happening over the weekend but we'll be sure to let you guys know if they are over discord and over twitter so join our discord if you're not already we have an amazing discord community um i'm gonna wrap up the stream y'all i don't think i'm gonna send a raid off because it's late already and there's not a whole lot of people that i know are streaming who is streaming i guess i should check on that before i make that claim um, did, did Wander start streaming again? No, 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 no. Um, in that case, yeah, I think, uh, we're just going to call it a night here, everyone. Um, a big, huge thank you to Firestar and our other moderators that joined us, uh, throughout the stream. Um, give, drop, drop that mod love for our amazing moderators. If you don't know that we have the, ma the most amazing, man, man, I can't talk tonight. It's too late. I'm tired. We have the most amazing moderator team in the world, y'all. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, big thank you to everyone that subbed, resubbed, and dropped bits. You guys help us do what we do. You guys are amazing. We love you. Um, and have yourselves a fantastic rest of your weekend. Uh, I'm going to be posting, I'm sure benchmarks and other cool stuff that I love about my computer over on my Twitter. So be sure to follow me if you're not already, if you're interested in seeing that kind of stuff. Um, with that, thank you so much for keeping me company. Have a fantastic rest of your weekend. Catch you all next time. Bye, y'all.